Good evening, everybody. It's hump day. Well, at least for some of you it is. Some of you don't know what day of the week it is because you've been shut up in your home for so long. You don't know what day it is or what month it is. But this is Wednesday, and it is April, and we have another midweek lesson for you. But before I get into that, I want to share with you what I'm planning to do as a, a loving husband, knowing that my wife and I have been shut in for so long, and uh, she's been doing a mountain of cooking and taking care of things around the house. And so I, uh, I'm going to promise her, she doesn't know this yet, I'm going to uh, fix a home-cooked meal for her tomorrow. Uh, I have some special ingredients lined up to do that. First of all, we've got this good salmon here, or what, lunch meat, I'm sorry. And then uh, some special corn chip variety here, home-cooked. It's going to be special. Yes, Marie. I just want you to know I'm, I'm planning to be the good husband I, I ought to be. Uh, seriously, I hope that you are treating one another with love and respect. Uh, in a time like this, it's especially important for us to have. Well, tonight we're getting into another lesson on questions that Jesus asked, being serious for a moment here. And this one comes from Luke, the Gospel of Luke. And we're looking at chapter 7. I'm going to read, first of all, this section. It's a lengthy section. And then after reading from 36 to verse 50, uh, I'm going to look at the setting of what's being transpiring in here and then introduce the question that Jesus asked and the significance that it has for us. So if you have your Bibles open to, to uh, Luke chapter 7, starting at verse 36, this is what Luke writes. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house, and he sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. Now that's expensive. And she stood at Jesus' feet behind him, weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair on her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke within himself saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know what manner of woman this is who is touching him. For she is a sinner. And Jesus answered. Notice how he's answering a question that's not been asked. He's answering a thought in the man's heart. Verse 40. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, Teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owned 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one who he forgave more. And Jesus said to him, You have rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair on her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has ceased not to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil. But this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to him who little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this? who even forgives sins. Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. I want you to notice a few things in the outset. Number one, 
the point about hospitality and that day and time when you had someone into your home as you would in in today's time you want to show hospitality you invited a guest to come over to your home what they did back then is the people when they came in with sandals on they would wash their feet or at least have a servant to do that they would dry them with the towel and and make sure that the guest was comfortable if it was a hot dreary day they might pour a little bit of oil on their head something to, that would be fragrant that would refresh them to make them feel a little bit better simon should have done all of those things for jesus and more if he'd just been a normal person of course he isn't just a normal person and jesus brings out the fact that simon just basically totally disregarded the rules of hospitality to embarrass jesus to shame him in front of the crowd now as we're looking at all this i want you to see that i want you to also notice what the woman did herself because when she came in, number one, she blew past all different cultures in that day and time. She went into a Pharisee's house. Can you imagine that? She didn't feel welcome there, and she wouldn't have except Jesus was in there. Jesus represented a door opening, you see. No matter how that woman might have felt, she would have been regarded by the Pharisee and all of his friends and all the other Pharisees that were likely there she knew if she could get to Jesus, she'd be okay. She would feel welcome by the one who was in control of forgiveness of sins. That was the kind of person Jesus was. So the woman comes in and she does this before Jesus. But as Jesus is, in that manner of speaking, laying down, eating, because they didn't have tables that they sit in back then like we have today, he's reclining on the floor, possibly a mat in front of them as a centerpiece of a table. And Jesus' feet sticking out from behind him. And she comes up behind him and begins to weep. But she, goes and she knows how grave her sins are and how terrible they are in the sight of Jesus himself. Simon hasn't figured that out. And then she breaks another rule of culture. She undoes her hair and she dries his feet with her hair. That adornment that God gave her one that she probably abused many times because she was the sinner, as Simon described her, the sinner of the world, probably a prostitute, probably well-known in that area. And she comes behind Jesus and takes her hair down and dries his feet with the many tears that she said be shed because of her sins. How incredible that must have been. And then she broke out the most important thing she could have, an alabaster jar uh, of perfume probably very, very expensive in that day and time. And she begins to pour that on his feet, to waste all kinds of money, in a sense, on the feet of an individual, because she felt that was how precious Jesus was. Now, I want you to see all that before we get to the question. Now, as everybody is seeing what's going on, Jesus raises this question. Verse 44, in the middle of the verse, it says, do you see this woman? You see, there's something to be noticed there because, yes, they all saw her. The moment she walked in, people were probably scoffing. What is she doing here? She can't come into this house. And yet nobody stopped her because probably Simon was wondering, what would Jesus do with this woman as she came to him? He was expecting, Simon was, something of a, of a discourse of, don't bother me now. But Jesus allows all of those things to happen. And he points out not only to Simon and to all of those people, but to us today. Do you see this woman? In a manner of speaking, we have a phrase that we use today. We talk about, let's talk about the elephant in the room. That is the most obvious thing, in other words. The most obvious thing was there was a prostitute in a Pharisee's house. And nobody talked about it, but they all stared about it and they probably whispered about it and, and all that going on. So Jesus just brings it to the forefront. And he says, do you see this woman? Well, of course they did. They were all there watching. Jesus wanted to point out, you're not really looking at the woman. You're not looking at what she was looking at. You see, the woman was pointing out the value of Jesus. The woman was highlighting the master of the universe, the son of God. Do you see how 
he was being treated by this 